Welcome to another We Are One in Spirit podcast. I'm your host, Yvonne Perry, and today my guests are Eva Lucas and Alicia Lucas Hall. Welcome, ladies. Hello. <laughs> let, me tell you, Hello. let me tell you a little bit about these two wonderful people. Um, they were able to come to my house when I lived in Sweet Home at um, the retreat center there, and we just connected with them so beautifully in spirit and in the physical realm there and we've stayed in touch this whole time and I thought well these are two people that I would really love to have share on the podcast and when I read my bio you're gonna go oh I know why <laughs> <laughs> Eva and Eva Lucas and Alicia Lucas Hall are mother and daughter for their earth journey on a galactic level they're evolution guides galactic activators multidimensional healers, quantum weavers, vibrational creatrix, and unity ambassadors. They are here to guide souls and starseeds back home to their crystal heart. They empower you to embody your true divine essence. Ascension journey and the evolution of unity consciousness to create heaven, one earth, heaven on earth, excuse me. They facilitate multidimensional transmutation healing, weaving, activations, emanations, and alignments on a deep soul level by integrating galactic and ancient healing modalities, techniques, and soul technology. Oh, I like that. With their higher <laughs> selves and cosmic teams. Sounds like we're doing a lot of uh, similar things here. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, so uh, having so many things in common, it's like, oh, yes, perfect guest. Now, there is one thing that I'm seeing here in your bio that I may not be familiar with. I've heard of weaving, light weaving, but I'm going to let you kind of start with that and explain to us what is light weaving? What is this weaving you're doing? Alicia, you want to start? Sure, for sure, definitely. Well, first of all, thank you. I'm so honored to be here with you again, to meet up again, even though it's online. Mm -hmm. um, light weaving to me is basically going in and creating, it's almost like cosmic threading. So it's like, you know how we sew in the physical and we're going to do that in the ethers. We're going to create that reality. We're going to weave that higher dimensional frequency, that higher aspect of yourself, and we're going to weave it right into your physical body so then that way when we're doing the multidimensional healing in the ethers when you come down we're bringing that frequency down into the here and the now and that's where it needs to be so we can co-create that heaven on earth so it's just basically weaving the cosmic threads of a new reality a new frequency mm. now does that also include timelines and parallel lives or how, yes definitely okay so yeah so it all depends what we're weaving um for um, let's say we want to take a higher aspect of yourself. So we'll just tap into which dimension, which timeline, where, mm. where is that coming from? And then we're going to have you step in. And basically it's kind of like that really light weaving. And we do that through either um, light emanations, the light language, or mm. anything that needs to be done at that time to weave them together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. I saw light weaving at the Star Knowledge Conference in, in Nashville one year when I was uh, presenting there. And it was by... An Native American grandmother, and she did it with body movement, with with dance and storytelling. Is that a part of it as well? It's very much so. I, I prefer myself. I love to move with the energy, and, and mm -hmm. I, you become the energy, so you become uh -huh. the weaver. So you're actually going in and you're weaving those two together, so it's very similar. Yeah, okay, well that explains that. <laughs> there's, a, there's some other things on here that um, I want to ask you about as well. Uh, star magic, uh, that's something that we um, talked about. And uh, Jerry is, the, yeah, he's the one that um, was the facilitator of that. And I've uh, followed him for a couple of years, even before I met you. So that was the thing we had in common. Um, which one of you ladies would like to share a little bit about what you're doing with star magic and how you use that in your ministry? Okay, um, thank you for having us here, Yvonne. Bless With you. Star Magic, it is multidimensional um, healing. We, the way we use it is we go into a person, but we never know, right? We're always in the uncertain when we're going into healing a, a, a person. Mm -hmm. And we go into, we just, put the space on, we go into them holographically, right? We connect with them holographically. And <laughs> then we go in and see, show me what we don't know. Or if they have specific um, issues that they want us to go in and 
we can't lead it, right? We just go, we flow with the flow. Mm -hmm. We flow with the cosmic. We flow with the matrix. We Every time we go in, I know that I ask, please show me the universal database for this client so that I receive the information. And we and you never know if you're going to another planet or if you're uh, calling on a galactic to come and help us. And there's just so much multidimensionality going on. And it's really about using, allowing your imagination to be free. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And just don't, don't limit yourself, just expand yourself and allow yourself to be the the conduit the, where the healing is coming from and they will give us the knowledge the guidance every the techniques where we have to send them with is it into a healing um pool is it um, a dolphin that's going to come and rest on them and hear their souls or is a dragon going to come and help them release their issues and or their blocks um i don't know if you want to go go in mm. further alicia uh, with the star magic I think that's great for, for me. I think it's very powerful and potent and where we get to work with the interdimensional beings of light and interdimensional realms, as you stated. So it's a really magical experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time, uh, remind me of Jerry's last name. Sergeant. Sergeant. First time I saw him, I'm going, oh my goodness, he's doing what I do. <laughs> and there was that, <clears throat> that kinship of Matt, you know, it's like, this is so cool that somebody on YouTube is actually brave enough to step out and say wow here's what i'm doing and he's presenting it and then you know the COVID thing came and lockdown occurred and well i think we're some people are still in lock, lockdown you're in canada right so you're still yes, we are still experiencing some of that yes the, the hair growing <laughs> i don't know how long this is gonna last but you know it's growing for now <laughs> till i can get to the salon and do something but yeah so so jerry i guess didn't have a lot of um meetings during that time um but i continued to to follow what he was putting out there which was very timely um it's very intuitive what you're doing you you really do have to trust your imagination and and your guidance so when you get something that's really weird and you think oh i've never done that before how do you approach that how do you just free yourself up to do something unusual like Naaman, go wash in the dirty river seven times and you'll be healed. <laughs> mm, interesting question. I feel for myself, um, from, from experience is I don't question anything. Mm. You just go with it. So if something comes into my mind and I'm just like, what is that? What's that for? I ask mm. it. Why are you here? What am I supposed to do? Like, what are you here for? How am I supposed to, um, let's say like she, like Eva had said, a, a dragon appears. Why are you here? Or you just watch them do what they need to do. If not, I'm always questioning them, but I don't question myself of what mm. I see or what mm -hmm. we're doing. You know, we always intend for everything to be facilitated for the highest good of all. And, and that, you know, it's just all goes with your intention and imagination, but nothing, mm -hmm like we had to explain this morning that no healing is exactly the same because we never right. know what we're coming into and then we just go with it yeah and with it being working interdimensionally there's no way you can see it all at one time and with the human mind comprehend all of that so it really does require that we trust that we trust and and what you're doing with the questioning is not questioning their their ability it's more like discernment correct right give me some information yeah right Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, Eva, do you find when you're working with people that they have this inquiring minds need to know syndrome or, do, or are they pretty much relaxed as you are relaxed in the unknown? Um, there is, you, you have both. You have both the, um, they're the ones that are going into analysis paralysis, right? They need to know everything. They go question, but, but it's our job to hold space for them, right? Mm -hmm. And really just bring them in more peace. And if that's happening, you just did, you, they don't know what you're doing. So you could just bring in more peace and calm to calm down their body, to be an acceptance. And then there's people that are just loving it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they go, Oh my God, I've forgotten about this. And you, when mm -hmm. you get into the people where they're in tune with their past life and this one specific lady, and she's like, like, how do you know that? Like, you know, like, because she was so, in, she's already so in tune in the, with Alicia, myself and her, it was just a phenomenal healing, but it was a phenomenal release of a past life and mm -hmm. present life. And mm -hmm. she just allowed it. Mm -hmm. So I think the more you allow, 
the more you can receive at the same time, right? That's and then so the more true. healing that can be done. But it still works for uh, people that come in and they're um, unsure, right? Mm -hmm. And they're almost scared mm -hmm. to go in. But before you know it, they're diving right in there with us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really a beautiful exchange. And it's watching them actually, they, they're transforming transmuting right in front of our eyes mm -hmm. it's like <clears throat> it feels like to me we set a field and invite them to come in and find their place in that field and connect with source or the divine and then build their own architecture to structure their own healing there it's in like you said we're holding space for that that's the way it feels to me i just kind of step aside and go okay i'm the vessel i'm the conduit i'm not really making this happen i'm allowing it to happen through me so right yeah i'm sure you can resonate now you met, you mentioned the past lives uh is that where your akashic records one two and three training comes in oh actually uh with the past lives i don't particularly always focus on the past life i allow the past life that is most important and pertinent uh, at the time mm -hmm. to come in because it's not what we were or who we were in the past life it's what we did experience and our beliefs and patterns that we brought in to this life with us and it's still holding us you know we're carrying that past life here to our present and to our mm -hmm. tomorrows so with as far as past lives are concerned that's how i use it even in the kashik records it's just really what's what luggage is is still there what <laughs> yeah. pattern or karmic debt or vow that they need to release versus let's go into have a past life um memory down memory lane type of thing mm -hmm. i was watching cry on through lee carroll the other day <clears throat> and he was talking about karma being a man-made construct that something we created to keep ourselves in bondage so it seems to me if we could erase this mentality that we have to be punished for something or that there's a, a right way and a wrong way to do something, we could free ourselves from that karmic pattern. But it sounds like even what you're doing is just going in and saying, here's what I'm seeing from this dimensional reality that's affecting you here now. And if we can kind of break that cycle or cut the cord, whatever you call it, from that, then you can be free more here and now without that that's need right. for the karma that's right because it's basically the as i keep going and the belief is karma is just old stuff old mm -hmm. belief that we didn't let go of right right and it's us that is saying that we have to be punished for it right it's our belief that we have to be punished for it we don't have to be punished for it we need to just allow it to let it go learn the lesson what wisdom can you bring with you and then just really say thank you and really just let it go mm -hmm. beautiful way beautiful way of, of, of explaining that thank you now alicia you've also got conscious parenting coaching at the high institute for parenting you want to share a little bit about what you're doing there um, well, that I took um, many years ago. At the moment, um, I am a cosmic mama to four rainbow star seeds. So I just felt at that time that Earth credentials just assist me on the journey. However, right now, um, I'm basically, it's like a galactic mystery school at home all the time with the children. Uh -huh. and that's why we felt it was important. I saw the impact that I was making in our own family life. So that's why Eva and I have created that um, Crystalline Portal membership, which also includes meditations and ascension tools and techniques for children, for the star seeds. Oh, wow. Because th that's what I feel that we can offer right now in the physical for children and how we can assist them on um, a cosmic family level. Mm -hmm. Yes, because the matrix has an agenda that is trying to pull them away from their star seed selves, their true expression of divinity. And I can see where that would be very important at a time like this to educate them, educate children spiritually and let them bring their gifts forth to help us out. Yes, yeah. definitely. There are future. There are future masters, future teachers, yes. and, and they're here to be those ascension bridges to co-create a new earth. That's mm. what they're here for, I feel. Yes. So mm -hmm. yes. beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Um, well, you've got some quantum holographic Reiki. Now, is that different than the regular Reiki? Um, Eva, you want to talk about that? 
For me, um, for, when I go into the quantum uh, Reiki, it is, it's just going into holographically, right? It's like, you know, Reiki go do long distance, right? Yeah. You just tune into it. This is where we bring up a hologram, just like we do in star magic. Right, we just bring in the star magic, um, the hologram, and we connect from the heart. It could connect from the third chakra empowerment, and just connect it to that hologram. And do we could do our Reiki right there in the hologram. And what the hologram is really amazing at is you could really feel, sense you're really more in tune with than when you're just sitting there. When I'm when I'm just sitting there doing a, a long distance Reiki, it's just more active. Mm -hmm. that's what it is for me like it's more um you put all your spins into it like you bring in the star magic you bring in the akashic records you bring in the quantum field like you just bring it all together as a beautiful modality and you know we work from the reiki from from there we just really energize the reiki in itself mm -hmm. i don't know how you do it Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about the same <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Well, I, I've had Reiki several times, and I can't say that I've really had any big, life-changing, transformational um, experience with it, but it sounds like you're taking this beyond just energy work. You're actually going into the, the hologram, and when I think of a hologram, I think of a big picture that can be broken into smaller pictures and still retains the right. original picture, so I'm thinking if I am modifying my entire big picture on a quantum level then it's going to affect every one of these little shards or fragments and bring it all into wholeness and alignment exactly it's just um when i i know when i do um patients or clients long distance they can actually feel it mm. they can actually feel the connection they could actually feel the disconnection like you know when it's time when we break up the hologram and we just send their hologram back to ourselves and we you know go back into our our own body they they say that they can feel it they feel uh frequency they feel mm -hmm. they get the visions inside of them mm -hmm. so it is very powerful mm -hmm. and and is, when you're talking about visions are uh, there's also journeying perhaps <clears throat> um it, it sounds like a lot of what you're doing is very cosmic and galactic but also it has a shamanic feel to it as well um yeah, yes. either one of you want to touch on that. How does the cosmic and the shamanic earth-based practices work together? Wow, okay, so yeah, so that that's why we blend it all, like you had said perfectly, <laughs> like cosmic, galactic, and shamanic. I think it's um, a mixture of um, who we are. So we're bringing in all different aspects of our own selves, mm -hmm. our higher mm -hmm. self and our earth self. So we love to use the drumming to align souls. Um, to work with in the earth frequency and then we can bring in the cosmic and the internet interdimensional uh light realms through our light language mm -hmm. so we're just doing it all um we're just blending it all i can't really i can't really pinpoint which one's shamanic which one's galactic which right. one's cosmic because it's just all flowing through uh, we're just opening mm -hmm. up ourselves stepping outside mm -hmm. of ourselves surrendering to the light that's coming in and just applying it in that way but i would say that it's all rolled up in into that of uh, those three basics um yeah I don't know how else to explain it in that way well it sounds a lot like what i do it's it's very intuitive and you don't have to know exactly what's taking place you might get a little hint see a little snippet a vision hear a word think a thought and you go oh that's profound i wouldn't have thought of that on my own um but it's like okay we're running light language and all of a sudden it's like pick up the drum right right Okay, did we just move into the shamanic and, and the earth days? And okay, because that's what that person needed in order to break up that pattern or, or to allow them to open to the codes that the light language is bringing in. Correct. And your light language changes or yes. your the way you're emanating it changes as well, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So just for that soul. <laughs> just for that soul. That mm -hmm. is so amazing. It's so, really uh, surrendering, right? It's just surrendering yourself mm -hmm. to the healing and, mm -hmm. and just be there for the person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Eva, do you think that the the star languages or the light language, when angel languages, uh, they're called so many different things, it's all the same. <laughs> are they frequencies and codes or 
are they actually languages that we've learned somewhere else? Oh, that's a great question. Um, and it could be totally to everybody's um, personal frame of reference. For my frame of reference, it's, I believe, because uh, I see, because I do a lot of vision, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm more vision and hearing. So when I'm in my light language, I call on my shamanic queen because that's who I've been training with. So I feel that it is her, she's bringing out the light language inside of me, as well as um, I, I'm, I've been practicing with different galactic, galactics and each one has a different, their fingers are moving differently. Their voices are different. Mm -hmm. Their symbols are different. So I believe that really we're, it could be we're channeling them, right? Or we, we're okay. becoming them, or we're allowing them to come inside of us and we're just working, allowing them to work through us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers oh, the no, question. No, that's perfect. But that brings up another scary thing that people are afraid of. When you say I'm letting them come into my body and work through me, some people go, oh, red flag, ah, uh -huh. because, you know, it's like, oh, you're just opening to anything. But I don't feel that way at all. No, because we do our boundaries, right? We call right. in the most benevolent beings, mm -hmm. we surround ourselves with the most loving, truthful uh, energies. So, and we don't open up ourselves. I don't feel I open up myself to channel. I never use, like, I don't say, oh, I want to channel you. Mm -hmm. Can I be in your frequency? Uh -huh. You know, like, uh -huh. or, you know, can I in tune, just like the holographic, so I connect with them. So I'm connecting with them. You know, and I'm feeling into their presence, their essence. So instead so, of them coming through us, is it possible that we are connecting and coming through them? Huh? That's a good. We that's are one. We that's, are that's one. That's correct. <laughs> we tap into their frequency band and then use our voice to speak yes. what we are gathering, whatever information or codes or or frequencies or <laughs> holographic constructions that we are gathering there and then just allowing it to be spoken through us. I don't ever feel out of control of it though. Do you? No, no. not at all. Mm -hmm. no. It comes not off all. more as like an emanation of light of the, like you had said, their essence, their frequency, or maybe it might be another higher aspect of yourself just coming mm -hmm. through or, or whatever that soul is needing at that time. But like you said, I don't feel not in control of um i yeah i don't even feel afraid of it sometimes when it sounds very uh, no. it feels right. like um, like it has some anger to it or some uh, to me it's just like well that's just another expression of maybe the earth shaman or the tribal ancestral connection that we have maybe that's what's coming through so I think because people are afraid of things they don't understand, they automatically want to find something wrong with it rather than going, hmm, let me be curious about this and explore and get some more information. Right. 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 Or experience it. Like, mm -hmm. That's what I tell people all the time. It's like, I can't really explain what light language is. I can do it for you and let you experience it. And then you tell me what it is. <laughs> it's not, yeah. And yeah, have them open up their heart to feel yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. right? right? We're always in our minds thinking of what is it? What are they saying? Why not open up your heart and feel? What are you feeling from it, mm -hmm. right? Then maybe there's not so many uh, fears around it, right? When we're feeling into it. Yeah. And a, a fear is created from the mind, not from the heart. The heart yeah. doesn't feel fear. The mind does. And so whenever we're having fear, it's a good time to just stop for a moment and go, okay, what in my programming is alerting me to something being different at this time and can i feel into that with my heart and feel secure enough to explore it correct yes i love that yeah mm -hmm. yeah well i would love for us to do a little bit of light language together do we want to take turns and just let you do a transmission and bless those sure. who are listening and you know what however you want to feel into that yeah you want to do that sure oh, all right yeah. okay <laughs> Why don't you go first, Alicia, and then we'll go Eva, and then I'll wrap us up. All right. 
inviting you to step into that unified circle, that unified field of oneness. Mm. There's a beautiful spiral coming down your spine mm. and just step into it because there's so much love and frequency and energy in there. Beautiful. Wow, I feel it all over. Dorava ishno no la makota ye or a dala voshke. Handalon darma ovale, usakule, usavale, usakule, under a maniaku, ashkave, or lot and a monda kavash kiroton, the malena kaki. Mm, we are one, we are one, we are one. There is no fear when we know that we are one and we live from our heart center. Mm, let go of your fear. Begin to trust. Trust your discernment even. Feel with your heart. Your true knowing is in your heart. Whew.